Somebody get me a candle to blow out because I just saw Happy Death Day to you. Let's get started. Hey everybody, welcome to Thumb Together. My name is Andrew Fantasia and today we're going to be talking about Happy Death Day to you together. As usual, if you enjoyed this video, please feel free to give it a thumbs up and give some love to that subscribe button as well. And don't forget to check out Amazon.com where you can get my book, Side Scroller, available now in paperback and ebook. Yay! As I mentioned in my Fanny Awards, and if you haven't seen the Fanny Awards, I'll put a link in the description below. Happy Death Day to You's Halloween reveal trailer was my favorite trailer of the year of our Lord 2018 because of just how damn good it was. And because even though I had not seen the first one, it got me so hyped for this franchise that I immediately ran out and watched the first one. And I'm glad I did because the first Happy Death Day is now one of my favorite horror movies I've ever seen. It was just so much fun. And now we've got this sequel, which is a very different animal, but still really, really good. So what's the deal with Happy Death Day to you? Well, it's going to pick up where the first one left off uh, quite immediately, actually. Some more crazy stuff happens. I don't want to spoil anything, and there's a lot to spoil here, but I will say that if you were curious regarding what causes the time loop in the first movie, that question gets answered in this movie. I think that they did an excellent job uh, not only revisiting uh, so many of the sets and scenarios from part one, but putting their own unique spin on it for this one. That was just, that was the icing on the cake, getting to see all of that in a different light. Uh, it's said numerous times, you know, like the first movie they kept saying like, oh, this is just like Groundhog Day, and it was. And now in the sequel, uh, they keep talking about how similar it feels to Back to the Future Part 2. That's 100% correct. Happy Death Day to you feels a lot like Back to the Future Part 2. Uh, in many ways, this is uh, a very sci-fi movie. But it's not just that. And that, that's what I love about Happy Death Day and its sequel is that, you know, they, they do what every good movie should do, which is they don't pigeonhole themselves into one particular category. They are a broad strokes, big picture kind of story. And they delve into all sorts of little genres. It's a rom-com. It's a teen movie. It's a horror. It's a slasher. It's a crazy sci-fi movie. There's possibly some time travel. I'm not going to confirm or deny that. It's everything. That's what's great about it. That's what's great about movies like Back to the Future. It's everything. Movies like that are so rare, so when they come along, I am just pleased as punch to see them exist. Now, having said that, Happy Death Day to You does do a couple things that I'm not a super fan of, at least not yet. For one thing, there's a scene where uh, one of the characters, and I won't spoil the context because it is still really funny, but uh, one of the characters, Probably my favorite character in the series for just how damn obnoxiously funny she is. Uh, the character Danielle. Uh, Danielle is pretending to be a blind person. That's all I'll say. Danielle is pretending to be blind. And that scene was just kind of, I don't know, it just kind of fell flat for me in terms of laughs. Like, it just felt really goofy, silly. Um, most of the laughs in Happy Death Day and the sequel are, you know, they come from a genuine place where it's like, oh my god, this is funny. Like, you're laughing at the misery of Tree or at, at the misery of the other characters. You're laughing at the ridiculousness of the situation. But in terms of just that moment, the laughs just were kind of like, huh, okay, that's that's kind of goofy, but whatever. Um, but it, it was all right. Like, it didn't ruin the experience. It was just like one little slice that was, uh, you know, not super duper funny. But it worked. It, it wasn't like cringeworthy bad. It was just like, eh, this is not as funny as the rest of the movie. Then there was um, something that's a little confusing. And I don't know, maybe I'm just not wrapping my mind around the whole science of it yet. Which is why I, I'm thinking maybe, you know, it, it needs another watch or two before I can get that down. You've seen from the trailers, I'll, I'll do a mild spoiler warning here, even though this shot is in the trailer. But you've seen from the trailer that the character Ryan, this guy here, there's two of him. He's, he's looking at a copy of himself, which you know, makes you think, okay, there's some kind of time travel going on here or some kind of multiple dimension crossover. Something is happening. Why are there two Ryans? My problem, unless I'm very much mistaken, and I hope I am, is that they never really answer that question, at least not clearly. The part of the movie where there are two Ryans who meet up, that takes place very early in the movie. That's like the end of the first act. 
And I'm sitting there and I'm thinking, okay, so we're going to find out how this other Ryan got into this universe and, and what caused that. But that doesn't really get touched upon. And I thought, oh, okay, well, maybe, you know, at some point in this movie, they're going to be bumping into parallel versions of themselves or something like that. But that doesn't happen either. There's only ever one tree. There's only ever one Ryan after that. There's only ever one Carter. Uh, everybody's just one person. So... I don't quite get where that part of the story was coming from. And you'll know it when you see it, but one of the scenes involves uh, Ryan getting text messages from somebody who's clearly watching him. I don't know if that was supposed to be from himself or from the actual killer. I don't know. I, I really got to be careful what I say because of, of spoilers here. But uh, that whole, just that whole chunk of plot where there's two Ryans, that confused the hell out of me and I think I'm not alone in that I think that's that we were expecting something when we saw that we were expecting uh, a very specific kind of sci-fi kind of thing going on and then that didn't really happen so I don't know I need to watch it again and maybe I just missed some you know there's some math that somebody does and it's like well the quantum blah 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 then I'll be like okay I get it I'm just a big dummy that's what's going on other than that Happy Death Day to you, while I wouldn't say I prefer it to the original, I will say is pretty damn good. It is an excellent continuation of the story. And again, like, the, the continuity, whoever the script supervisor is who's dealing with the continuity in both this movie and the first one, <laughs> damn, okay? Like, let alone you have to deal with the whole repeating things and time loop thing from the first one but now two years later you have to take the same actors and the same sets and make them look exactly the same as they did before and you did it i don't know how you did it but you did it so kudos one last thing there is a mid-credits scene and you need to watch this mid-credits scene because it sets up very clearly a happy death day three without spoiling anything i'm gonna say that the setup, you know, what it's promising, what part three is promising to look like, thanks to this scene, has me so excited. I'm already anticipating, like, that one is going to be my favorite one. That's all I'm going to say. All right, so that is Happy Death Day to you. I'm Andrew Fantasia. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you here next time. And until then, happy birthday.